This is my brand new OLED TV, 55 inches of high definition technology, perfect timing for a summer of sport, or of course watching my favourite YouTube channels. Whilst we're talking YouTube, why not subscribe to the channel, you won't regret it. And whilst I'm loving the crystal clear picture and excellent sound quality, <gasps> there's one thing I'm really not loving. Why is it so inefficient? OLED TVs are considered the cutting edge of technology at this point in time. They work differently to standard LCD TVs in the way that each pixel can be turned off and on, which basically means you get much sharper contrast in the image. Because of that technology, OLED TVs don't require a backlight like standard LCD TVs, meaning they can be much thinner. And whilst OLED TVs are slightly more power hungry than their standard LED equivalents, they are much more efficient than older technologies like plasma screens. So why do these labels make it look such a bad story? So here's the box from the TV that's in the other room, uh, and you'll see that it comes with these two energy ratings. One is the UK and the other is the EU. Now that's really only there as we've transitioned out of the EU, uh, and ultimately now in the UK we're only beholden to our own regulations. But at the minute they're exactly the same, so you can see that labels have exactly the same detail, just different flags on. Um, but you can also see that from the rating system you might be familiar with in the past, it's actually changed. It used to go all the way up to A++ and down to D, I think, um, but now it's a simple straightforward A to G. The reason for those plus plus ratings was because over time things became more efficient and they had to add things onto the top of the rating system to be able to give them a rating. Um, but yeah, we're back with an A to G rating now on all of these uh, labels for any electrical good that's sold in the UK or indeed across the EU. Um, but that still doesn't really explain why such a modern piece of technology is all the way down here. What the hell's going on? There's more than one reason why that TV uh, is at the bottom of that rating scale. Um, and the first one is that when they reset the ratings, well, they made the bandings a lot harder to achieve. So in practical terms, there aren't many goods on the market right now that fit into the top A grade because they made it so challenging. They've left room and a bit of incentive for manufacturers to make things more and more efficient to get that top rating. In fact, flicking through AO.com's list of available OLED TVs, there are none that get above a G rating. There's a couple that are on the website which seem to be rated better, like this one from Philips, but actually when you click onto it, it's a G. So if this cutting edge TV is currently rated a G, the lowest of the new scale, where would it have sat on the old one? Well, the official answer is it's a bit murky. If you go on the proper government website that talks through all of these things and has lots of frequently asked questions, they give you a rough indication, but they say it sort of varies from case to case, product to product, appliance to appliance. However, if you go on some of the retailer websites like AO, which I've got up here, they do give you an indication. So my TV, which is rated G on the new scale, would have been a on the old one, which sounds a lot better, but we've got to remember that with A++++, a would still have been fourth from top, so not amazingly efficient. So are OLED TVs just more inefficient? The simple answer is yes, they do consume more energy to give you the same output than a standard LED TV. As an example, my new TV it consumes 106 kilowatt hours for every thousand hours of use. And these new labels are really helpful for understanding that. Uh, a similar sized and specified LED TV uses about 74 kilowatt hours per thousand hours of use, so it's about 32 kilowatt hours different. In reality, that sounds like a chunky number, but it equates to about £6.50 at current energy rates. And a thousand hours, well, that's 2.75 hours a day across a year. That's a reasonable amount of TV to be watching. So about £6.50 a year, give or take, uh, difference in energy consumption. Of course, if you're trying to be really energy efficient, then buying an LED versus an OLED TV, well, it's a reasonable choice to make. A caveat to that, of course, is if you're upgrading from something older, say plasma or some preceding technology, then the energy efficiency gains are going to still be significant for an OLED TV over that older technology. So it really depends where you're coming from.
Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I'm guessing if you have done, then you must have liked it. So give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to my channel, if he does it. There's more information in the description below about the stuff I've talked about in the video. So you've got any questions, have a look through that. And of course, stick something in the comments if it's not answered there.